Okay, so this is Volumes of Revolution, and this time we're going to talk about a different method called cylindrical shells. And when we do it, we're always going to put the rectangles that are going to be parallel to the axis of rotation. And so I have this particular function here, and I'm going to rotate it around the y-axis uh, 360 degrees. So I'm going to go in this direction. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my little dx. I want to take this area and rotate it around. I'm going to take this little dx, which is a really wafer-thin piece, and I'm going to rotate it around, which means I'm going to pull it around as such here. And that happens around here and around here on the top and on the bottom. And so you get this little cylinder that would pop up in the middle. And that's why it's called cylindrical shells. And so when I find, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, the, I'm going to take this and I'm going to open it up so that I have basically a rectangle, a rectangle that is opened up. I know that this particular area is equal to the length times the height. Well, that length there is equal to the circumference of this particular cylinder. And that radius here is just x. And so it's 2 pi radius, 2 pi, 2 pi radius times the height, which is the height here. Well, the height of this particular cylinder is just equal to 2 pi x times my function f of x. This is the height. And so if I want to find the volume of all these, I take the volume from, let's say, 0 to 3 of all, I get to add up 2 pi times the radius times the height of my cylinders dx. This makes them wafer thin. And so now this makes it this particular vol area of volume. And so this method here will find me for cylindrical shells. All right, so using that idea there, we have a radius and the height for 2 pi r h. So when I have this particular scenario, we have our functions again. I know this is f of x. This bottom one is g of x. And I'm going to rotate around the y-axis here. Okay, so I'm going to put my little rectangle parallel to the axis of rotation. And so I'm going to go from 0. This point of intersection here is, if I go back to my calculator, I'll find the intersection point. There is my intersection point. 1.256. I'm going to go 2 pi. My r is here, which is just x. My height, though, is this top curve, g of x, which is 2x, minus the bottom curve, e of the x minus 1. That's the height, and that is going to be times dx, and I can find my volume for that. And so, using my calculator, I'm going to, I know my x value, I'm going to store it into alpha b. And I'm going to then go to my calculator and say 2 pi math number 9 from 0, 0 to 1 point to alpha b. Oh, hold on. Come back. I'm going to go 0 to alpha b of x times 2x minus parenthesis e to the x minus 1. Close my parenthesis d x. And when I do that, I get my volume 
of 1.324. If we look back to previous ones that I did, we can see that it is the same as this one here, which we were going around, the same volume. We went around the y-axis of these two functions, and it's the same computation. But cylindrical shells, this time, I think, is an easier approach. All right, so there's cylindrical shells. So what we do is we take our volume from a to b of 2 pi times our radius times our height f of x dx, and that will give us the volume of a region.